no matter the location. From OAK LA to LV, I'm a Raider. Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report. Raiders win 17 to 16 up against the Los Angeles Rams. So if you only get one word, and I mean one word, don't cheat on me. Go down in those comments and give me your one word reaction to let me know how you're feeling. Maybe some of you might say magic. And if you're saying magic, it's because the Raiders Report is presented by Magic Spoon. If you guys love some healthy tasting cereal, if you want some stuff that's 14 grams of protein per bowl, only 4 grams of net carbs, 140 calories per bowl, head on over to magicspoon.com slash Raiders where you guys can save $5 off your very first order. The reason why I might go ahead and say magical is because the game is 16-17. to 17. The Rams score. It's basically coming down to the final play of the game. They're going for two and on a back Back shoulder fade, Dale Levitt makes a play, basically breaks up the ball. Raiders come away with a win, 17-16, and the over-under in this game, which I took, was 33 and a half points. I'm not a math major, but I know that's not 33 and a half. Raiders win 17-16. Get your questions, your comments in here right now. Hashtag Raiders, or you can super chat. This one's first coming in from Daniel Keaton. Mitch, is Kuhn still looking small? LOL. There were times Malcolm Goods looked small in this game. Yes, I he made a few clutch plays, but he still he had an opportunity for probably two sacks and came away with no sacks in this game. I mean, he did have six total tackles, but I wanted to see actually a little bit more out of him. He played most of this game. And what well, I say that he still kind of looks small. Yeah, he had opportunities to bring down the quarterback. Those are the type of plays that you want to see in the regular season because if you have an opportunity to get a sack and the quarterback is able to scramble away and pick up a first down, dude, absolutely back-breaking plays. Let's go to Martin. Ugly game, but a win is a win. 100% Martin. That was a very ugly game from top to bottom. When I do my winners and losers grades, like it's going to be kind of a difficult thing to do because I'm sitting here and I'm like, well... There's not too much going on here for Las Vegas. But yes, I agree with you. A very ugly game, realistically, from top to bottom. I mean, both teams. I mean, the Rams, 331 total yards. The Raiders, 229 total yards. Not a lot of great things happening. Both quarterbacks, I thought, kind of struggled. Defense has played well at certain times. Let's go to Nathaniel Morea. So this one says, uh, any news on Javen White? So White left the third quarter with a knee injury. He uh he kind of got rolled up on and instantly started holding that left knee. I hope he's okay. But as soon as he left the field, he went to the medical tent. Was in the medical tent for a very short time. Then he ended up getting carted off and was crying hysterically. White was one of my winners last week. The kid out of UNL, UNLV. Definitely has a shot to make this roster. But, I mean, you see knee injury, the way he was crying and the way he got carted off. Not, not really what you're hoping for. Uh, I'm honestly just hoping for it's not a not a season-ending injury. And honestly, for some of these young guys, it, it, it can actually be a little bit worse. But, Javen, hope up to you. Everyone down in those comments, please type 53, wishing, wishing Javen White it was not a serious injury. Now, if it was a serious injury, or if there's any more news and rumors that come out about White, I'm going to keep you guys updated here. If you're looking for non-stop Raiders videos all year long, and I mean all year long, there's not a channel out there on YouTube that provides a Raiders show every single day. And I have given you guys a show every day. Plus, it's 100% free. More subs equals more videos. So if you love the Raiders, if silver and black's in your veins, go ahead and subscribe. This one's coming in from GC Sports. Do you think that signing KJ Wright, David DeCastro, and Geno Atkins out of free agency? So, like, honestly, I think KJ Wright right now makes the most sense simply because if Javen went down with an injury... Nick Wachowski missed this game. Darren Lee missed this game. And then Morrow missed this game. I mean, you're talking about not a lot of depth at the linebacker position. K.J. Wright's starting to be a lot more of a possibility. David DeCastro, I'm good on. He's been rumored to retire. Geno Atkins at DT. Still kind of an interesting player to think about. But K.J. Wright's clearly the best player on that list. $30 Super Chat from Raider Ed. Raider fans taking their shoes off and kicking them off on the Rams coffee table. While the Rams' wife makes us the sandwich, damn. That's uh, that's an absolute roast there by Raider Ed. So, thirty dollars super chat that equals a beer, sh beer? No, not beer. It's gonna be a shot of Fireball. 
But I'm going to do it after this mailbag here, Raider Ed, and I'm going to make the new guy come on and uh, drink with me a little bit. But, hell yeah, Raiders win. Let's go to Todd. What up, Todd? Todd, Todd, Todd. Do you think Peterman has become a serviceable backup? I still don't think he's a serviceable back. I mean, he's a quarterback three. I mean, think about it. He's the QB three on our roster. Mariota's still the better backup. If I got to rely on Nathan Peterman in the in the regular season, we're in trouble. And when I think of serviceable backup, that's what I think of. Can I trust this guy to lead us to victory? No. I mean, let's. There was still so many plays tonight. We were like, "What the hell is this guy doing?" He's a smart player. He is, and he knows the system well. However. He is not somebody that I ever want to see in a regular season game. As simple as that. This next one's coming in from Eric. What up, my man? Nate Hobbs, had hands down MVP. He did have an interception. He actually also had a missed tackle. I like what I see out of Hobbs, though. I mean, in terms of all the rookies, Leatherwood played really good today as well. Like, I get it's kind of hard to find stats for offensive linemen, but if you watch that Raiders' first drive, it was run to the right, and they were running behind Alex Otherwood, and he was just whooping on the defensive line there. So, like, I think Leatherwood played well, but I agree. Nate Hobbs, he uh, he started to look really good. He, he does look very, very good. So, again, if you guys want to get your questions, your comments here on the show, go ahead and use hashtag Raiders, or you can go ahead and super chat. Now, I do want to give some love to today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. If you haven't already, go to magicspoon.com slash Raiders and use promo code Raiders to save $5 off your very first order. If you're looking for the best-tasting healthy cereal on the market, look no further. That link is going to be available for you all in the chat. It's also going to be available for you all in the description. My personal favorite flavor, cinnamon, cocoa, fruity, frosted. Go try the variety pack of four. That way you guys can get some more cereal options. But... I mean, remember the cereal that you see as kids? Dude, it's terrible for you. Like, imagine being a 12-year-old, covered in acne, got a pizza face. You're looking like you've been drinking beer your entire life because you got a belly. Like, you're talking about cereal that's got 30 grams of sugar per bowl compared to Magic Spoon that's got no grams of sugar. Four grams of net carbs compared to, like, 35 grams of carbs. I mean, guys, it's not even close. Like, it's not even close. Magic Spoon not only made healthy cereal, they perfected it. And they're so confident that you're going to love their keto-friendly, non-GMO type of cereal. They guess what? They got a 100% money-back guarantee. So if you don't like it, you get your money back. You got nothing to lose, man. MagicSpoon.com slash Raiders. That's the link you all need to go to. Let's go to Rubik. What up, Rubik? Levitt getting cut. I'm with you. Levitt back-to-back -back weeks has not been very good. He was a player that before I would have said not going to end up making this 53-man roster. He's a good special teams player, but sooner or later, just because you're good at special teams does not mean you get a roster spot. I, I do think Levitt ends up getting cut. Let's go to Casey, the sledge storyteller. Hey, Mitch, never say no to a W, but lots of scrubs got torn to shreds. I mean, this was an ugly game. Both sides, both teams played a lot of backups, and I, I honestly believe the biggest reason why so many backups were played in this game is because of joint practices. If you live underneath the rock, then you don't know that the Raiders and Rams joint practices got a little feisty, if you will, right? It's, it's definitely an F word to be able to throw around. And, I mean, there was a lot of fights that ended up happening, so I think you saw both teams play a lot of backups, and, yes, it was some ugly football. There is no doubt about that. Let's go to Jackson. Which player made the team tonight? FYI, last name is LeMeasure. Le Did I get that right? Hopefully. Uh, made the team. Which player made the team tonight? I mean, I really think that Roderick Teamer played well. and He's got a hell of a last name for this question. I still don't think that he ends up making the 53-man roster, but after his performance tonight, I mean, he, he played pretty well. He made some pretty clutch tackles. Ended up leading the team with eight total tackles in this one. I still don't think he makes the 53-man roster, but he definitely ends up making the practice squad. So what I want you guys to do right now is fill in the blank. The Raiders preseason week two MVP was, and then fill in the blank. I think that your options are either Roderick Teamer. I could throw out the name Nate Hobbs. I'm not going to say Nathan Peterman. I mean, here's the thing. I don't really know if there was a true MVP. Like, it's kind of a shitty thing to say, but yes, the Raiders came away with a win, but it was a kind of a joint effort. Like, there was not one player tonight where I was like, clear MVP, and usually I can go that route. The reason why I'm not going to say Peterman, he had two bad INTs. The offensive line played bad from top to bottom. Maybe Marcel Aitman. 
Some people are going to probably go ahead, though, and say Nate Hobbs. Now, if you guys want to get your questions featured here on the show, or if I don't answer them, you can always hit me up on IG. I'm at MitchellRen365. I tell people all the time to hit me up there. It's the easiest way to get in contact with me. Seriously, slide in my DMs. Ask me a question that's going on. If you want to see a future comment or whatever on a show, please go ahead and DM me. That's why they're open. We're going to be doing a lot more IG lives going forward. Super Chat coming in from Brandon Tyler, the Outlaw Raider, whose house? Our house. I mean, let's face it. We own L.A. Nobody's ever going to take that away from us. So, Brandon, shout out to you. Let's go to Shook. Shook. Uh, Raider Nation, one nation under car. Undefiable. <laughs> Undefendable. Indivisible. And just win, baby, for all. Just dominate, baby. Let's get some just win, babies, down in the comments. Appreciate the super chat from Shock. Let's go to so underscore Avi underscore love. Who is by far the MVP of tonight's show. Donating a lot of money. We had a phenomenal time. And I owe some drinks to So Abi Love. And I owe some drinks to Raider Ed at the end of this mailbag here. So So, appreciate you. Hopefully you're watching every single game the entire season. Let's go to Alec. What up, man? Good day, Raiders. Win, Braves win, Mets and Phillies lost. So, I'm a Mets fan, and I hate the Braves. So, I'm going to disagree with that. Uh, Mitch, not sorry about the Mets. Seven games back on the Raiders. Muse impressed me just a hard time. I will say, Muse, though, he didn't play a lot in the first half. He might not have played at all. That's kind of a warning sign for me. But with all the injuries at linebacker, Muse is going to end up making this roster. What up, Hector? Happy birthday to Stephanie. Raiders, we're going 3-0 and in the preseason. Let's go. I mean, anytime you step on the field, you're trying to win. So hopefully the Raiders do go away with a 3-0. and But happy birthday to stephanie sorry for the burp you guys are making me drink a lot uh, on today's show everyone down in the comments hbd to stephanie let's go to scott black what up scott what do we do at linebacker white is a sprained mcl that's usually six weeks to heal calling kj right so i mean if if that's the actual injury i'm gonna see right now so apparently morrow's foot injury is concerning a lot of people uh, I just literally just got an update here. Let me read this here. So Raiders injury updates. Nicholas Morrow has an ankle injury and will miss some time. Kwiatkowski should be back next week. Javen White has a knee injury, and Marioka plans to play next week. But in terms of White, it sounds like he's going to be out at least six to eight weeks. So not really what you're looking for. So what you guys are looking at right now is the Raiders linebacking depth chart. I'm with you. With all these injuries, if, if K.J. Wright's still out there and knows the Gus Bradley defense, why the hell not? This next one's coming in from Miguel Hernandez. Hobbs better than Arnett. Uh, I mean, he's so far played he's played better than Arnett. I still don't know if I'm going to go that far because I'm not the biggest fan of Arnett. However, with that being said, coming out of the draft process, I definitely had Arnett as a higher grade than Nate Hobbs. But... Nate Hobbs has made plays during games. He had an interception tonight. He flies all over the football field, and he's doing the right things in practice. Arnett didn't play tonight. At least if he did, I didn't realize that he played, and that means he played literally like one snap. So, like, what didn't really see too much from him. He played last week. He was one of my losers. But I'll say right now, Hobbs has been playing better than Damon Arnett. Next one's coming in from Slider Holiday. Would you cut Douglas and Vickers after their poor play today? I have not been impressed whatsoever with Kendall Vickers, which kind of kills me simply because, like, you're hoping more from him since he made the 53-man roster last year. But Darius Phylon, as far as I'm concerned, has totally outplayed Vickers. And then Douglas. I mean, Douglas, he's made some good plays, but mainly has made some bad plays. I believe both of these players are not going to make the 53-man roster. Remember, though, the Raiders have to get down to an 80-man roster by Tuesday. As soon as those cuts are made, I'll be making a video here on the Raiders report. So it's definitely something to uh, go ahead and keep in mind. So in today's game, he had four tackles, four pass breakups. This is Rasul Douglas. Kendall Vickers in this one had three tackles. But the Raiders' defensive line was not impressive. Douglas also got beat multiple times. Like I get it. He had four pass breakups. He had four tackles. But it's because they were targeting him. And they kept targeting him play after play after play. So just because you see those numbers, Douglas did not have a good game. And I, I bet he'd be probably the first person to go ahead and tell you that. I got another injury update here on Richie Incognito. He's got a calf strain. And the Raiders are hoping to have him back by the season opener. So they're saying that they hope to have him back. They're not expecting to have him back. 
So that's definitely going to be an injury to go ahead and keep in mind. Richie Incognito, calf strain. It does scare me because he missed a lot of time last year with that Achilles injury. All right, this one's coming in here from EE19B037. All right, man. Thoughts on the O-line today looked really damn shaky. Do you think we should look out for some veteran free agents like Schwartz? I'm not really going to worry about the Raiders' backup offensive linemen too much. I mean, were they bad? Yes. I mean, Jared Jones is terrible. Let's just face it. Uh, 77 Patrick, whatever the hell his last name is, he has not been good either as well. Uh, Nick Martin got worked. Lester Cotton looked bad. I will say if the Raiders lose some offensive linemen this year, it's going to scare the hell out of me. What up, Rubik? Cut Levitt after this game. They're not going to cut him yet. He's going to end up making the – he's he's going to be down to the final cuts. They like what he can offer in special teams. I just don't think he makes the final 53 man. Super chat coming up from Raider Ed. Raiders 2-0 and and haven't played most of their front-line starters. Good sign. Go Raiders. I mean, most teams don't play their good line, like their front-line starters. Most teams, they're trying to hide what they can potentially offer. But I'm with you. A win is a win, and I think that's an important thing. So great the Raiders' performance up against the Los Angeles Rams. A, B, C, D, or F. Let me know down in the comments. Even though the Raiders come away with a win, I'm going to give this a C grade. It was an average game. I don't really think the Rams played too many good players. The Raiders had plenty of opportunities to make some extra plays, score some extra points. So I'm going to go ahead and type C. So the Raiders, they beat the Seahawks 20-7. to We were alive for that game. Then they beat the Rams 17-16. Obviously, we were alive for that game. Guess what? We're going to be live next Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern time, when the Raiders go ahead and they battle the 49ers in San Francisco. I get this is a Bay game, but I need people to go ahead and represent this one. Remember, Raiders preseason game next week. Watch party. Make sure you don't miss it. And if you haven't tried Magic Spoon cereal yet, it's magicspoon.com slash Raiders.